Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us here today. We are going to be doing episode 7 of Banghead Financial. Um, I am, of course, Gregor Guy, joined here by Mr. Casey and Mr. Cuz. Welcome back, man. Are you happy to be back? <laughs> anyway. Absolutely. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Okay. It, it has been a controversial week somewhat in, in the markets and everything. Basically, the uh, U.S. you know markets, the, the Dow, the S&P, the NASDAQ composite, you know, everything is basically down between 1% and 2%. The um, crypto market, as of the time of this recording, you know, the total market cap is at $2.2 trillion, which is also, once again, slightly down um, about $50 billion from last week. Um, interesting thing that happened this week was the 19 million Bitcoin has been mined. Now, as we all know, Bitcoin has a total supply of 21 million. So there's only 2 million more left to be mined. And of course, there will be these happening events and everything that happen and happen and happen. You know, what they expect will occur like around the year like 2140. Well, the final you know, is when the final Bitcoin will be mined. But I thought that was just, you know, interesting bit of information. Now, they're going to be worth more money? Well, because there's a limited supply, that goes into the laws of supply and depend. Yeah. Depends on how, it, how the market goes with it. Yep. Right? Very true. But, I mean, also, at the same point in time, if you go and read the Bitcoin white papers and everything, this was created as a hedge against inflation. Which is, I mean, it might be our six point eight percent over the last twelve months. So do the math. Um. Anyway, I uh, no. I mean, I like I said, I just thought that that was like an interesting fact so that I 20, ran across. You said twenty forty, right? Uh, twenty one forty. Twenty one. Because you know they do these having events every four years, and so the, the miners, the mining supply is going to decrease and decrease and decrease. So those Bitcoin aren't going to go onto, you know, the open market, the exchanges, so on and so forth. And that'll make it more of a um, valuable asset, we'll say. So it sounds like to me that it's going to be the very thing it was designed to be. Designed to be. <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> that's, what it, that's what it sounded like, bro. <laughs> Love it when a plan comes together. Yeah. Maybe that was the plan all along. Well, okay, okay. Fair, fair enough. Um, the, the other thing I want to touch on, which um, uh, you, Mr. Casey, in particular, might have an opinion on that I would like to hear is um, Sandbox has apparently migrated to the Matic network in order to initiate staking pools. For sandbox, I'm gonna be honest. I am interested because this is a very interesting concept. Okay, a a game. Okay, a blockchain game that you know now offers staking rewards if you hold the you know sandbox coin. Um, and at the, at the time of this recording, I was seeing ridiculous numbers of 1,099% APR. And this is coming from the Sandbox website. Okay, well, this is honestly the first time I've heard about it. Yeah, I just heard about this this morning. Uh, it kind of just, like, I just snuck know, its way in here. I just know that it is, uh, right now, it's, it's, I think it's a, at or around $5.00. And it was at one point up at around uh, almost to uh, seven fifty or eight dollars or something like yes. that. But that that's going along with everything 
in the crypto market that I can tell is down right now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean <clears throat> slightly too. I mean, probably about like ten, ten percent or so. Right. But and I, I I'm not uh, personally. I'm I'm actually switching from Crypto.com to Coinbase for uh, unspecified reasons. But <laughs> but I I am not I'm not selling I'm not selling otherworldly yes other otherworldly problems I'm not selling <laughs> otherworldly problems like some of it's stupid well anyways um, I would I'm still not gonna get rid of um, I think just because they're down it does it does give me interest to look into that. Um, and I would I would recommend that too because I mean, from what I understand, granted, like I said, I just heard about this right. literally probably like three hours ago. So I did as much research as I could over the course of time. Basically, I think you have to stake the sandbox through sandbox. So, I mean, I, I don't know if that's actually true or accurate or anything, but, I mean, that's kind of how I took the reference material that I saw. Right. Um, also, on top of that, apparently 12 million sand, the sandbox token, has already been staked. And they have a limited supply on the staking pool, which basically means that the interest rate will continue to you know, lower depending on when you or stake. So uh, that's that's another thing. Interestingly enough, uh, uh, the the way they're doing it with staking via Polygon, it will create this M Sand token, which I, and I tried to do like as much research as I could on this in a, a very limited amount of time. Couldn't really find out a whole lot. But uh, apparently it will create this, like, you know, Matic Sand token, you know, kind of like how, like a, 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 like, a liquid dot or something would be created on, like, one of these other staking pools and everything. 1,099% <laughs> APR? Are you kidding me? Yeah, that's a lot. I, I have... It's, it's ridiculous numbers. But, I mean, obviously, as I also said before, that number will continually drop. But, you know, yeah, I mean, might as well let your investments work for you. Yep. Another couple things that I discovered why I was uh, researching um, this particular endeavor was that um, I actually, for the first time, read the Sandbox Roadmap. You know, like where they see themselves being at certain, you know, times going forward and everything. They apparently plan to have Sandbox on consoles by the end of 2022. On consoles? On consoles. Think about that. So they're selling, They're going to sell it on consoles? As well, a, as a, as a, yeah. I mean, it'll probably... Uh, I mean, granted, we, we would have to talk to somebody from the team, but I would assume the idea is... You know, with the sandbox, you know, it'll probably be, you know, free. It won't actually, like, be a game or anything. Right. But, at the same point in time, you can build things in there that will, you know, cost, you know, f you know funds, basically. Right. Okay. Like a creation. It, it basically, I think, think about this as, like, like, like another, a new Minecraft. But my my thing is is the most important thing on most of those building games is that is the engine that it runs on. And, That's true. And I don't know what engine Sandbox runs on because some engines are are good and some are absolute garbage. Uh, there are certain games like I do I do believe that they are on the Unity engine. Okay. I do believe I saw that it's it's either Unity or Unreal. It's one of the two. As as much fun as as. Uh, Minecraft is. I don't know what engine it runs on, but it looks. It is boxy and it is personally visually horrible. Well, I mean, uh, that's the way they designed Minecraft. Yeah, that's actually, the, that's yeah, I mean, that was intentional. Right. So it, it was never meant to be like a triple A kind of game, but right. it took off because apparently a lot of young people had fun playing it. Not well, even you, young people. You, you, it was 
just uh, some. It's easy. It's just uh, easy. An easy game to play because it's easy to build and it's easy to create things on it. Um, it's not necessarily the the graphics that are the draw because there's a lot of good games that don't have good graphics. The game matters more than the, than the graphics in most cases, but graphics can definitely uh, deter people away from playing the game. Sure. Very true. The immersion sure. isn't there. Sometimes. Right. right. Unless well, you absolutely love gameplay. Yeah. A lot of people are into graphics, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. The game yeah. shit, but that's why there's fucking games that are just like movies. The so, value uh, is in the eye of the beholder. There you go. And everything was built for everybody. And, and right. people... And uh, this is uh, this is a little off topic. But a lot of things that people don't understand uh, when they're trying to build or create something is that they're trying to target a fo- like everybody in the market instead of just focusing they're focusing on, on one group on yes. one group that is going to enjoy one thing and then you'll have a dedicated group for that instead and, and then if you try to stretch it to try to fill more people then you're going to lose that group that group's might like it a little bit, but not enough. You know what I mean? You gotta target. You gotta target directly to your audience. All right, fair enough. Well, I, I'm gonna end this section of this discussion with one question that I will propose to both of you. This will potentially be the first blockchain game. Well, game, and we'll put that in like quotation marks because it's more or less like a service, rather, that could come to. In particular, consoles. So, my question to each of you is, where do you see the future of blockchain gaming going on, in particular, consoles? How they're going to implement it? Well, I mean, that, that's always going to be, that. that's probably going to be the road that is going to be the roughest, I would assume. That's going to be like, you know, driving down a dirt gravel road. It's whoever's the first one to do it, it's going to be rough, but if it actually works and works decent, I believe that the sky's the limit. Then the second person is going to profit. <laughs> That's usually how things work. But, I mean, they would also have to have that technology. Right. They are developing their own technology. Um, Casey, you got any? I think, it's, I think it's very complicated. I think a lot of people I, and, and and different forms have tried to do the same thing. You know, how, like they had the Xbox gaming. Uh, you you. Well, I don't even remember what it was called. I, all I know is that you you could if you wanted to buy something on Xbox, you had to buy their specific mm-hmm. currency, and um, and it, it quite frankly it kind of fell apart. Yeah, you, what what they call like coins or something like back then. I don't too. I don't know what it was called. I know it was stupid, and I didn't want to buy anything. Microsoft, it, it, I, and and then I was more willing. I was more willing to buy stuff on Xbox when I could see the the actual value of what I what I was buying right. instead of just a like seven hundred points. I don't know how much seven hundred points cost until I go into the program and then I try to buy the points. And, and then that? and then and then those points, I would always have points left over from what I was buying. Yeah, so I yeah, yeah. they priced it so that you had more points left. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Basically, just encouraging to yeah. buy more. Just, so, just let me buy what I want to buy for the money that I want to buy it for. Don't fucking make me go through hoops to, to buy yeah. something. Well, I mean, you know, they have corrected, you know, with the less, you know, particular console cycle and everything. Right. As far as Xbox, I, I have no familiarity with, you know, PlayStation. I, I do believe that they have corrected that issue. I mean, they even let you get points for free. We do it all the time. Yeah. Right. Not necessarily free. you got to put in a little bit of time, but... Yeah. Oh. That's true. I mean, I, I mean, I really enjoy what Xbox is doing right now. I haven't been on Xbox in year, uh, maybe like a couple of years. PC so. Mass Race! I mean, I don't consider it like a Mass Race. I just... The selection of games and the quality of those games is just better on the computer than they are on Xbox. That's and... Right. PlayStation. Fair enough. Well, let's go ahead and get into the meat and potatoes of our discussion right here. I know both of you are looking at me crazy like, man, we talk about so much shit already. I'm just, no, I'm actually thinking uh, about meat and potatoes and I'm getting hungry. 
Fair enough. Okay. <laughs> All right. So the Fed had their monthly meeting this um, past week, and the decision was made that they will not jack up, um, or they will not raise interest rates until at some point in time in 2022. Meanwhile, they are tapering back their bond buying program from, uh, I believe it's like $30 billion to $15 billion a month. Now, a lot of you are probably asking, what does this all mean? Okay. The idea is that if they raise interest rates, it will curb the inflation numbers that are coming in. So, at the same point in time, they, they also did say that, or, or not, they didn't necessarily state, but a lot of, you know, financial experts and everything believe that there will be probably three, upwards of three somewhere between one and three interest rate hikes throughout the course of the next year. What percentage are they going to? That's up to the Fed. There's nothing. Right That's now. up to Jerome Powell and, you know, his cronies or cronies. Okay. <laughs> Obviously, we know where you live. <laughs> I... I mean, these are basically appointed politicians. Let's be honest. I mean, they weren't elected. Yeah. I mean... I don't know what you want to say about that, but what's the first? Do you know what the first raise of interest rates going to be, or are they still no, 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 no. It, it's it's more or less okay about the the idea behind raising the interest rates, which you know would lead to people being more reluctant to borrow money. Okay, okay, they want to keep them low in order to stimulate the economy. That's the idea. But as soon as they raise the interest rates and make people more responsible for, you know, their loans and, and, and you know, and funds and everything they have going on. So they want the money to flow back. Well, I mean, you so always want the money to flow back into, you know, the centralized banking system. Right, right, right. But that's what that, you get inflation down, you get deflation. They get more money. Well, I mean, I mean, the idea about raising interest rates is to taper like that six point eight percent that you know we got on our November report up from six point two in October. So that number is probably going to keep increasing until they actually do this interest rate. So, uh, okay, let me break down a little more. When the Fed raises interest rates, okay, because banks borrow money from the Fed, all right? Okay. So when they have to pay more interest back to the Fed, that gets passed along to the customer. So it'll, you know, discourage people, rather, to take loans, so on and so forth. And the whole point about doing that, guess what? You're not going out, you're not buying cars, you're not buying houses, you're not, opening you know, businesses. opening businesses, stuff like that. So they try and keep the interest rate low to stimulate the economy. However, it doesn't always work out like that. Because obviously we are in a unfortunate situation, a global situation that we are in right now. Uh, there's other factors they're not looking at. I believe the rate right now is like 0.25% for the Fed. Okay, let's say they move that to 0 0.5, 0 0.75, and then 0 0.1 over the course of the end of 2022. Why not start it now, make it a more gradual increase, and everything, and, and, you know, let more or less uh, people and workers do what they need to do to survive. Because they don't give a shit? Really? That's one opinion. I don't have an answer. I have, I, I have no answer for it. I yeah, this is, um, this is obviously, <laughs> yeah, 
one of um, one of the more complicated issues that we have talked about here on Bankhead Financial. Right. Um, also, I will also point this out: if they do raise interest rates, expect stocks to go down. And okay, yeah. So we're gonna end uh, in the episode there. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching Banghead Financial, Episode 7. I am, of course, Gregor Guy, joined here by Mr. Casey and Mr. Cuz.